Uh, it's week three, and it's all about the big four. Oh, and multitasking. Uh, it's Craig and Richard here for the week three feedback video. Now, Richard's just come from a silent retreat, so he's not going to be speaking today. He'll just be standing here and looking wise. No, actually, I'm hoping you might say a word or two. I, think I should break silence, Craig. You've been carrying this show for the last two weeks, so I might as well... Uh... Have some input. Good. Yeah. For, any, for any new learners, I'm one of the lead educators <laughs> on the course. You've seen me in the videos and I also yeah. feature in feedback videos from time yeah. to time. Good. Excellent to have you back in the studio. <laughs> it's great to be back here. Cognitive practices. Yeah. Learners loving. It's such an important part of mindfulness, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> and it, hopefully it broadens out the notion of when we're sitting down practicing the meditation, what we're actually doing, because it's a lot more than just sitting down, just trying to relax for a few minutes. You know, we're actually cultivating these skills to be more aware and perceptive, to to be able to let go, to be able to accept the things we find uncomfortable, to be able to be present. Yeah. <clears throat> these things make a big difference in our day-to-day -day life, especially in relation to stress, et cetera, when, yeah. when life starts hitting the fan. And, and that uh, happens intuitively if we meditate because we mm. just find ourselves doing that in day-to-day -day life. Yeah. But it's also good to be able to think about it. What is acceptance? How do I let go? Mm. These kinds of things can be very important just to consider as, as concepts. Yeah, yeah, to bring them right to the to the forefront so we do actually reflect on what's happening on a subtle level. And so many of the learners have been really valuing that and finding it quite um, quite useful this week. You know, ranking the uh, cognitive practices, I'm not sure we've got a... a <laughs> Some of our uh, learners were trying to rank them. Which one's more important? Yeah. Is yeah. it acceptance? Is it letting go? <laughs> yeah. Well, when I was developing uh, the course based on these principles years ago, it seemed to me that perception was the first thing, to be able to distinguish between imagination and reality. So and in, that, some, in some ways that could be seen as the foundation. Yeah, the, yeah. the kind of the first step into waking up and then actually what we do with that, the letting go, the acceptance, the being present. So, And we talk about them as if they're different things, but they're actually, all, I think, really different facets of the same one thing, yep. because it's really hard to be truly present or uh, to to be truly perceptive without being accepting and letting go. So they all yeah. kind of come together. And they all support one another really well yeah. also. Yeah. And, and some of our learners raised a really interesting point that a lot of these metaphors um, are, are, that are used with, with the cognitive practices, that they're just part of our everyday language. Yeah. Things like, you know, making mountains out of molehills, yeah. coming to our senses. These are all things that we just sort of say and don't often stop and think about what that actually means. Yeah. But through a, a lens of mindfulness and particularly these cognitive practices, it's, I, I think there's an intuitive understanding yeah. about some of these things that we start to rediscover when we start practicing mindfulness. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and two, uh, two that have uh, caused a lot of discussion around acceptance and letting go. And it's, and it's very difficult, especially for the things, the people that are closest to us, um, and life is inherently transient. And in many ways, you know, the attachments we developed, the, the clinging to things, when life, events, people, success, failure, all these things come Material and go. Material possessions, everything's just coming and going. And the attachment comes with um, some pain at the end mm -hmm. when it goes, unless we just accept. And even right at the minute when something arises and it's enjoyable and we enjoy it, somebody we're close to. But if we just remember right at the outset, that this, this, um, our life is inherently transient, then we don't develop the attachments no. and maybe we don't experience the, the pain and suffering that comes with, you know, letting these things go, but letting go doesn't mean that we're not naturally sad or that we no. may not experience, uh, emotions that are natural. It's to just we accept things. that it's part of life. It's yeah. just part of how things are. That's right. And, and we're not talking here about a detachment. It's a non-attachment. And, and, yeah. and they're actually quite different. We're not living life in a sort of detached way or nothing's real and in that kind of nihilistic off. way and cut yeah. off from ourselves and everybody else. No, yeah. it's about being very much part of life and connected with ourselves and connected with others, but without trying to hold on to yeah. anything or push against anything. Yeah. So, and, uh, and, and even if we're working with this, and it, this is not necessarily easy. I mean, we make it sound simple, and it is simple, but as we've said before, it's not easy. And, uh, and even if, if there are attachments, uh, there's non-acceptance of something, we can, we can nevertheless bring awareness to it. You know, we can just sort of sit for a moment, just stop, and just be aware of that sense of attachment, being, being aware of the effect of the attachment, being aware of the, the non-acceptance and the effect of that. So we can just start to develop some awareness around it and the cost that comes with it. Yes. 
And that can start to develop the clarity rather than just say, let go, no, no. let go. And, and I think that awareness is really the key, isn't it? It's to notice what we're doing and the effect, or as you said, the cost of doing things like trying to hold on. Yeah. And some of our learners, uh, we're talking about opposing viewpoints yes. and you know, getting into arguments with other people or, or tightly held mm. political beliefs. And I think that's obviously pretty topical these days. But also a really important consideration because mindfulness maybe doesn't mean that we just let go of any idea about how the world should be. We just, you know, mm. stop voting and stop <laughs> stop caring about society. I mean, we, we might choose to hold beliefs yeah. that certain things are maybe right or wrong or better than others, but maybe we don't hold them quite so tightly. Mm. Because when we hold on really tightly and someone else is, of course, holding a totally opposing viewpoint or political mm. belief, then we're just going to get into conflict. And if yeah. we can perhaps just loosen our grip on that a little bit, it might reduce some of the conflict and also some of the stress for yeah. ourselves. And it may help us sometimes in conversation with somebody, uh, if we're holding that viewpoint, that opinion more loosely, it helps us to be objective about it, to yes. stand back from it and look at it. And maybe to understand more deeply why we hold it, or maybe to consider, wait, I'd never looked at it from that different perspective. Mm. And so, you know, like, um, must we accept opposing viewpoints? Well, I think we can accept that others have opposing viewpoints. Yeah. Um, uh, do we have to let go um, of strongly held political views? Well, maybe we let go of the attachment to strongly held political yes. views. And that may make it easier to be more collaborative, more collegial, more respectful, more attentive to others' perspectives. And maybe it helps us to sort of understand our own a little bit better. Mm, yeah. And likewise, I think, you know, does accepting a personal weakness mean... Mm no longer trying to improve ourselves. Yeah. I think, again, it's the same thing. You know, interesting we, question. I think it's a very interesting question. Yeah. Again, I think we can try to perhaps improve ourselves in certain ways, learn new skills, or perhaps be more present in the yeah. world or kinder to others. We can cultivate those things, but perhaps not coming from a place of a personal sort of weakness and seeing mm. that we're somehow flawed, but just a yeah. basic place of acceptance and wanting to develop those qualities within ourselves. Yeah. I can remember when I uh, started medicine and uh, I, was, I, I went into medicine because I was interested in the mind, not interested in blood and gore and being a surgeon was not going to be my thing. And I can, <laughs> I can remember having to step into the dissection room was, you know, as it was coming up in that, you know, in the course was, uh, you know, not thing. something I was, was looking forward to. Yeah. And I can remember just noticing that there was this sort of aversion, this sort of phobia about that. And, you know, it was going to need to meet it. And I can remember uh, intuitively, I was about 19 at the time, but intuitively thought, wait a sec, I might just stand at the end of a very long corridor with the dissection room at the other end and just stand there with those uncomfortable feelings. A little bit and of just... mindful graded exposure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just did it intuitively, <laughs> but I just stood there with those feelings and just practiced feeling calm in the presence of those uncomfortable feelings. And then next day I moved further down the corridor and just the same thing again. So there was an acceptance that that aversion, that fear was there, acceptance of uncomfortable emotions, but stepping into it. And because if there's, oh, no, you know, fighting, suppressing, and, of course, we get ourselves into some very uncomfortable places and we actually accentuate the very thing we're trying to get rid of because within a week or so I was able to step into the room and yeah. feel quite comfortable with it and you know I actually quite enjoyed doing small surgical procedures and various things so but it wasn't a, a direction I went in because I was interested in the mind yeah. but but acceptance doesn't mean ignoring or no fighting no. with mm. no the formal practice yeah was really uh, really popular this week a slightly longer practice mindful listening of course mm. means we start mm. to just notice the surroundings and allow things to come and go. Very powerful practice. One of our learners, a Muslim learner actually asked, you know, said, the more I progress in this course, the more I feel like what we're doing here is totally aligned with, with Islam or what I'm already doing. Yeah. And I think that's a very interesting point that mindfulness isn't sort of a religious mm. thing, but it's found in all of the spiritual traditions, yeah. all of the wisdom mm. traditions. And I think the ability to be present and quiet and to look deeply inside yes. and to connect deeply with others these are all, I think, fundamental to any wisdom tradition teachings. Yes. And, and I've heard over and over again from Christians and mm. Jewish, Muslim, whatever, like uh, people who've, who've learned mindfulness over the years. So, hang on, this is deepening my connection with, with God yeah. or with myself or with the prayer mm. that I do every day as I do it more mindfully. So yes. I, I really like that comment. Yeah. I can remember one time a, a Muslim medical student came out because we've got quite a, a large number of Muslim students yep. in the medical course here at Monash. And um, one of them came up um, after a mindfulness tutorial and was asking me, well, 
where does this fit in with with my religious, you know, because, you know, prayer, that's the thing I do. And I, I said, well, sure, you certainly don't practice anything you're not comfortable to practice. But the question is, when you when you go, you know, the prayers that are very important to you, where's your attention when you're in the prayers? You know, do you are you really fully with the prayer or sometimes do you find yourself thinking about lunch or uh, yeah. thinking about something else? And he sort of reflected mm -hmm. for a moment. Hmm. Yeah, good point, well, Greg. actually, Dr. yeah. Hassett, so, uh, <laughs> so maybe you want to practice mindfulness so that, among other things, it can help you when you're yes. praying to really give your full and undivided attention to something that's very important in your life. Yeah, hmm. I think it's a credit to the way that we structure and teach this course as well that it is accessible to everybody from yeah. different faiths and yeah. different cultures yeah. who can really sort of just take on these generic principles and, and apply them in their own lives. Yeah, in ways that are relevant. Yeah. Multitasking, obviously, a big issue uh, that's come up this week and uh, our multitasking is expected in the workplace. And we're hoping that you're getting the sense of being able to consciously, efficiently switch attention. And a question around, can we get better at switching attention? Yes, we can. And we can reduce the attentional blink if we practice things like mindfulness. So, so the attention becomes more agile. Yeah more flexible and um, we're able to do that better. But it looks commonly on the outside like efficient attention switching is multitasking, but it's actually not. Um, and multitasking, trying to pay attention to two complex things at the same time is a bit of a modern furphy. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even listening to music. I mean, some of our, our, our learners were talking about, can, can I listen to music while I'm, while I'm doing housework? Mm -hmm. I mean, look, they're simple tasks. And when we layer simple tasks on top of each other, it tends to not cause too many problems. Mm. But having just come back from a, a seven-day silent retreat, I have to say there's something very nice about not talking and using my phone and listening to music and reading and stimulating my mind because everything calms down. And the simplest activities mm. were actually very joyful. Yeah. Going for a walk, eating food, you know, cleaning my teeth. They were, it sounds kind of weird to anyone <laughs> who hasn't had this experience, but it's very nice. And it's nice to just be present in that yeah. way. And so I, I, I think there's nothing wrong with listening to music. Yeah. I do it while I drive, sometimes put it on while I'm doing housework, but yeah. there's also it's also quite nice not to sometimes. That's right. Yes. And productivity. Um, so um and the the whole uh, influence around social media is something yeah. that's come up for a number of people as well, well. Look, just I mean, briefly, we live in an attention economy. And there are companies now like Facebook and YouTube and I'm mm. naming names here, but you know, they, their whole business model is to hijack our attention to keep showing us ads, keep watching, mm. keep scrolling, show us ads. So mm. that's what we're facing. And so anything that we do to take back some control, whether it is ditching social media from our phone, I've done that recently. It's the best thing ever. You know, I just, <laughs> just kill, cause I use it for business, but I just killed the what, apps. What social media? I, 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 let's not even go there, Craig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But things like turning off notifications, unsubscribing from things, you know, like all of these things, like putting the phone on flight mode when we're trying to get things done, all of these things just let us take back some control mm. over our own attention, which is, it, it's our most valuable resource, Yeah, our and, attention. And I think very often um, the, the volume of things coming to us, it's like trying to drink a, from a fire hose kind of thing. It's <laughs> like <laughs> the amount of things. And so yeah. that simplicity, just reducing yeah. the volume of things can really have a very settling effect. Yes. Yeah, because we're taking back control over these things. Um, meditation and, uh, and being mindful in the flow, mindfulness in the zone, these different terms are used and sometimes perhaps interchangeably. Sometimes there might be perhaps some slight um, differences in those things, but to really be attentive. And when we're most mindful, most engaged, when you hear um, athletes perhaps in that peak experience, it's almost like a transcendent kind of experience and yet completely immersed, completely immersed, but not caught up in the action. Yeah. And um, yeah. very interesting. So next week, uh, managing emotions, just a simple topic, should be very easy. <laughs> um, just um, knock that one over <laughs> next week. Mindfulness in daily life, a longer meditation as well, 20 minutes. That's not a marathon, but it might be a half marathon uh, meditation, <laughs> um, especially if you're, you're building up to your, to your longer practices. And we'll look forward to being with you next week, and we hope you have a Fantastic and a very mindful week.